Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, other times of days, on other planets, and other, you, you know my spiel, come on. It's been like 44 episodes already, I Don't think me. you know how I roll. Plus, uh, I'm famous as it this week, so if I don't have to do anything I normally do. I am your host, Red Thunder Adam Gerard, but you already knew that, because I'm, like I said, internet famous this week. And joining me are my internet famous friends. I think this is the Honey Badger O'Neill, like that, or it's Kevin Owens in a very bad week. Kids are still on my fucking lawn. Fuck off! It's because you keep making milkshake and it's bringing all the boys to the yard. No, I don't want those sort of boys, though. And finally, the most hated man on the internet this week. <laughs> the dad night bread in the herd. How you feeling? How you feeling they the love? love me. They love, they love to hate me. They, I, I am feeding off the hate this week. And I, this week I've been on such a high. All the hate we've been getting, it's been so fun. It really has. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pretty good week. Uh, now, a lot of people will be asking, obviously, where, where's the probe? Where's the probe? Unfortunately, the probe, uh, all serious, that break, break and kayfabe. Break kayfabe. It's going to get serious. Uh, unfortunately, the probe has had a death in his family this week, so obviously our condolences go out, go out to the probe and the entire probe family. Um, sorry, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Um, <laughs> But legitimately, uh, I think uh, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence in, in honour of, um, of those born. Alright. Matt, take care of yourself. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll make jokes at your expense tonight like we normally would, but uh, it's all in jest and obviously we, we understand why you can't be here tonight. I look forward to when you do come back here from the back cave and uh, just know the hazing will obviously return to effect. I mean, we'll start off live. I will still, you know, welcome him back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't want to spoil that. Tune in next week if you want to see Matt get welcome back. Now, um, as I say, later in the show, we, we will have a bit of footage for you to see that, that I'm sure you'll all enjoy. But between now and then, Brayden, why don't you take us through what it's been like to be literally one of the most hated people on the planet this week? Tell me all about it. For, for me, I'm, I'm not a sensitive fella, but uh, <laughs> for those of you who... For those of you who are unaware, um, we have released our new song parody this week, Hashtag Elicity. Uh, we did take it to Twitter, and because it is titled Hashtag Elicity, you know, of course we had to, to write that in our tweet, uh, and it actually reached quite a few Elicity fans. What happened? Those Elicity fans were not happy. Uh, so I, I was at work all day yesterday and uh, received easily a couple of hundred tweets. Whoa, I didn't know I got that big. Yeah, man. Uh, it went hate. Oh, Jesus. Of, of pure hate. There was some love in there. There was some love. But the Elicity fans were just hating they us. They were irate. Oh, it was glorious. Oh. It really was. I've um I have got some of my favourites here oh, to share with you. Oh, Jesus Christ! Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Fuck me, yeah. <laughs> uh, I want I want to start with some of the early comments actually appeared on YouTube before they did on Twitter. Okay. And uh, somebody who goes by the name of Diana commented, "Prepare for a shitstorm from angry Elicity fans in the comments section." Yikes. So what one Diana, up you were not wrong. You were not wrong. <laughs> yeah, no Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> the floodgates opened and the shit demon from Dogma came out. The Golgatha Gol or whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, a lot of them have been making fun of uh, the amount of time that went into the song in the video game. Yeah, group. that's my so favourite part. Obviously, he didn't. In, in the video <laughs> is um, myself and uh, two members of... Not, Not from, from the Just Us League, League, my, my brothers, brothers are the, the, the Brother and Knights, I guess you'd call them. The Young Just Us League. They're the Young Just Us League. Just Us Light. Just Us Light. Light. At from Batcave. It's, 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 it's funny that you have to, funny that you have to, to tag, tag our fandom, fandom to make you relevant. relevant. <laughs> what? What? That's, that's actually the title song, hashtag Elicity, so, but, you know, thanks for the observation. Uh... At from Batcave, it was supposed to be funny. You're wa you waste your time doing this shit. Oh god, you're the real jerk. Go enjoy the day, it's better. Wow, well, oh, I would just like day. to so I, was really I would just like it. to counter that one since they called us a jerk by saying that in fact the jerks are cold and they're out of you. <laughs> Please continue, Brady. This, this one 
here, my absolute favourite, and I'm sure the other members of the Justice League will agree, mm-hmm. at from Backcat, he's not <laughs> even playing the guitar. <laughs> I love the fact they noticed that he's not playing the actual real guitar, but nobody noticed the Guitar Hero drum kit that he's playing. And he's just like, yeah, that guy's playing drums. That's how drums work. Oh, <laughs> Queen of the City. Is, is there... Oh, 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 so. Fuck me. The base said, 31 followers, bruh, deactivate your account before you get a follow-up, follow-back video to this from us. Um, I ain't no follow-back girl. We, we want a follow-back video. As the great Give man us a follow-back said, video. Just... Sorry? At From Back Cave, you guys ain't shit. <laughs> Because we ain't no fucking yeah, Batgirl. That's right, we're good. Thank you for pointing out that we're, yep. we're, we're in verse shit, which therefore means we're good. Boom! <laughs> uh, at from Batcave, you can't sing. It's pathetic, how, it's pathetic that you spent your pre- precious time on this, and I'm sad for you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> thanks. Be more at constructive with your feedback, please. Please. <laughs> Why you do this? That's from okay. How can you guys be more prof- pathetic, guys? But you have a lot of free time, right? And we're the pathetic fangirls. Yeah, yeah you yeah, are. Yes. We're not this, writing sex fiction. From, a lot of these are from people who go by the names of Queen Elicity, Elicity for Life, Death by Elicity. Yeah, you're you're the pathetic fangirls. Yes, you are. You're huge fangirls. Here's, oh, oh, I got something, I, 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 I got something to say about that. It's something that I realised this week. I actually put it out from our YouTube account already. Some people who've been there have already yeah, seen this. Yeah. Uh, I have a theory that but like, Twilight ended and that all the Twilight hashtag Team Bella, hashtag Team fucking Team Jacob and Team Edward Devil's Triangle, whatever. They all <laughs> hashtag Divas Revolution. They all moved from Twilight to Arrow and Elicity and so we've literally just pissed off those people who are just spastically mentally mag them. But a point was brought up to me in a chat by uh, by the probe who couldn't be here. And it's funny how when he's not here, he makes better points. Yeah. Maybe we should just fuck him off every week. But anyway, um, <laughs> let him write in. But yeah, he, he sent me something that made a lot of sense. And he's like, okay. So imagine you've got the book of Twilight, right? Yeah. You're now in the, the book, book in the book and in the movie, mm-hmm. Bella ends up with Edward. Mm-hmm. Now, what if the movies, they'd done it the other way around and the whole time she'd just been with Jacob instead? Mm. Wouldn't that piss people off who were fans of the book? Oh, yeah. Because that's all that's happening here is we, as Green Arrow fans, are going, dude, why are you not following the story when you're sticking so structured to it and everything else? Mm -hmm. So, take your fucking... Look at it that way. How would you feel if they had simply made the movie and just gone, no, no, she goes with Jacob. It's just all Jacob all the time. No, 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 no. I just don't know how to respond to half of those because it's just that boggles the mind, really. What do you? I don't know how they're doing. This me off is you know this has been this has been online for nearly three days. It's got just eight hundred sixty hours. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's at it's at over eight hundred views at sixty hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight hundred views at sixty hours. Not one Elicity fan has defended Elicity at all. It. Not it one has come up with a single reason as to why they actually like Elicity. Okay, we, we just wrote a song about plenty of reasons why we don't like Elicity. <laughs> exactly. You know? Instead of having some sort of intelligent rebuttal to this, it's, you guys ain't shit. You guys have too much time on your hand. You can't even play the guitar. See, that's the thing. I mean, I wouldn't... I don't think I'd be upset if someone actually wrote in and said, look, legitimately, I like this relationship. If they gave us a good argument, cool, no worries. This is why I think they should be with him or something. But yeah. it's, just, it's just... No, because they... 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 You see, mate, they're both... He took his shirt off for the kiss. You see, mate, the problem is they're both beautiful blonde. That's the problem. And everyone who's an Elishley fan is being racist to Brunetch. <laughs> oh, so it's all the Aryans. It's Aryan, mate. That yeah. makes sense. Do you guys realise, though, that we actually achieved something that I personally never thought I'd actually say this week? What's that? We became John Cena. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready for how we became John Cena? Here we go. Now, John Cena is um, is the, the, the person who gets the loudest reactions ever 
yep. in wrestling at the moment. He's the, he's the guy that gets loudest. And it's loud because they both cheer for him and they boo for him in equal measure, but they're still making a shitload of fucking noise. Yep. Right? So Cena will come out and will be like, yeah, boo me, cheer me, I don't give a fuck, you're making noise. And he'll almost like, beg people to come, to come out at him. There was a year where people booed the shit out of him and it felt like he went, okay, you're going to boo me? I'm going to do absolutely fuck all. I'm going to do as little as possible because fuck you. And I understand that now. I totally get it. It is like, okay, if you want to boo me, I'll give you a reason to boo me. Yep. You know what I mean? And so in this situation, I feel like we have literally, we've crossed the scene aside because we've got half the, like, there's a YouTube, our YouTube video got into a proper thread where somebody had an argument with somebody else when they were both arguing on the same point. Mm. We actually achieved full YouTube. <laughs> we have gone full. We went YouTube. full YouTube. <laughs> so we we have achieved the Cena reaction. Oh. We are now. We are the C Nation. Now the problem is they won't be able to see us. <laughs> That's that it. is a serious issue. And yes. we re- re- we have to rise above it. Excuse me, I have to have a delicious sip of my hand red. I would like to point out though, we did receive quite a few. Uh, Messages of, of support as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of people did enjoy the video and enjoy the song and enjoy the point we were putting across. Lots of people passed on our song to the writers of Arrow also. Yeah, I saw Mark Gook and I get Mark so many times. I'm like, this motherfucker must just be like, okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't say anything, which makes me even funny. It's like, why are you saying anything? I have a theory that, this, that the reason they've set all this up is to she has to get ripped so far away from him for him to, to go back. That has to be like, she has to die this year, surely. See, the funny thing is, I, I'm, I'm loving all the hate for a person, purely because this is only the beginning. I don't think they understand. Pretty much. I don't think they get what's in the pipeline at the moment. No, she's she's out of there. She's, oh, she might not be dying, but that relationship is done by the end of season four. And I will post a f- 10 hour clip oh, of me singing shit. Told You So, Told You So, You Stupid Ho, You Had to Go. So, yeah. Yeah. That, that, 10 hour that version coming to you, Straight dude. the rocks they came from. <coughs> well, just so if you haven't seen it, uh, hashtag Elicity on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash from the back cave podcast. 800 views and climbing. <laughs> Rapidly. Yeah. It's a little and scary. if you do like Elicity, use some intelligence and tell us why we will listen. Nobody that listens to our show <laughs> likes Elicity, you. mate. Nobody watching likes Elicity. Listen, I'll, we I'll, have we have fans of the, the actual product, not fans of like a hashtag. See, the thing is, I, I'm actually willing to put it out there. If you actually write in into us and actually give us your decent, honest reasons, we're not going to troll you in return. I'll let a motherfucker Skype in. Yeah, Skype in. I will let you have a video feed in so that you can literally have your face there to explain it to me. Fucking Let's Bill O'Reilly style. All right. Well, should, should we move on? Do it. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. of the same character uh-huh. but we'll get there let's start I think oddly enough the weakest episode this week Lois and Clark that'll be me then I have mighty small shoes to fill <laughs> Lois and Clark this week is all shook up I thought it was going to be an Elvis scene but it wasn't no, no. no it's okay. actually uh, it's actually based on <laughs> the original uh, Adventures of Fifth Man back in the, the black Superman? and white one Superman Superman, Superman. Superman. that's why I have to say it like that fuck you um <laughs> Yeah, the original Adventures of Superman yeah. back in uh, like the black and white one with the oh, was it George Reeve? Uh, yeah, George Reeve. Yep. Yeah, um, George Reeve. There was an episode the same as the he did. This is that premise. Wow. Cool. So they, they literally did a nice remake. Beautiful. All right, don't mind my slight side profile. 
Alright, so Lois and Clark are going through a lull story-wise one morning when suddenly the sky goes completely black. During the short eclipse, Clark is hit by a car and he pretends to be injured. Airport announced that the eclipse was caused by a giant asteroid named Nightfall, spooky, which is heading on a collision course with Earth. While Airport are confident they have a tactical method of disposing, the, disposing of the asteroid, a scientist appro approaches Clark and asks him to contact Superman so that he might help just in case. When Superman arrives at Eprat later that evening, he learns that Nightfall could destroy everything on planet Earth. The next day at a press conference, Lois kisses Superman for luck and he heads off into space with a small breathing apparatus and communication device. Superman crashes into the asteroid, only managing to disable a chunk of it, and crashes to Earth. His communication device is destroyed. A homeless man finds the crashed Superman, whose costume has been destroyed. Superman has lost his memory and borrows some clothes and glasses from the homeless man. Inspector Hen Henderson recognises the am amnesiac Clark. Is that, do I think that's that right? Amnesiac, yeah. Amnesiac Clark. Uh, at a homeless shot and brings him to Lois. Lois reintroduces him to the Daily Planet staff, including Pat, who tries to take advantage of the situation by claiming that she and Clark shared a passionate affair that no one else knew about because she's a skinny whore. In an effort to jog Clark's memory, Perry decides to send him with Lois to, Eprat, to the Eprat News Conference that is being held in the wake of Superman's disappearance. Here, he, the reporters learn that the asteroid has not been destroyed and that no one is looking for Superman this time. Jimmy suggests that Superman have, may have been the shooting star that was spotted by Hobbs Bay, in Hobbs Bay. Lois, and Clark, uh, Lois brings Clark back to his apartment and Clark asks her what their relationship was before. Lois tells him that, were, that, that they were just friends. Lies. Perry drives Jimmy to the the spot in Hobbs Bay to follow up on Jimmy's theory, and sure enough, Jimmy finds a smoldering fragment of Superman's s -tube. They deduce that Superman must have made it back to Earth. Park, Mar and Park Kent arrive in Metropolis and due to the clogged phone lines and heavy traffic, they decide to walk to, Clark, walk to Clark's apartment. Because, this is, because his first long shot paid off, Perry allows Jimmy to try other ideas. He has. Jimmy and Clark Go to a psychic to help him look for Superman. The psychic senses Superman in the room, but neither Jimmy and Clark realise that she's correct. Lex Luthor shows Lois a secret bunker that will enable him and a select few to survive the oncoming Armageddon. He invites Lois to stay with him and reveals a complete facts no, fax of her apartment. Lois tells him that she needs time to think. Even though Jimmy failed to gather any further clues as to Superman's whereabouts, Perry allows Jimmy to write the story about the man who still returned to Earth. Perry even gives Jimmy the typewriter on which Perry wrote his very first story for the Daily Planet. Clark's parents quickly realise that Clark is not aware of the fact that he is a Superman and go about convincing him by showing him the Superman costumes. When he, when, when he still won't believe, John smacks him across the chest with a baseball bat, which breaks, breaks in half upon an impact without even facing Clark. Jimmy writes the story quickly realising his lack of talent. Rather than take the story away from him, Perry teams lost up with Jimmy to polish the story. Cat confesses to a minister all about her personality flaws, opening up about why she finds meaning in meaningless relationships. She then tries and fails to seduce him. What? Clark desperately tries to remember how to be Superman. Jonathan Martha try and remind her of how he always describes his technique for flying, but it's not allowed. Eventually, Martha pushes Clark off the rooftop of his apartment building, hoping that he'll remember on the way down. Instead, Clark, Clark crashes into a dumpster where Lois finds him. Clark pretends to be looking for, for clues. As to where Superman might be, Lois laughs off and they begin talking. Lois really instills faith in Clark, reminding him of the wonder of their of the wonder of their friendship and all the things that make Superman great. In this conversation, Clark's memory kicks in. And Clark becomes Superman once more, and Superman saves the world. Very long episode, not much point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I can't say anything else. It wasn't it wasn't a terrible episode. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was very slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, extremely it slow. It dragged balls. Extremely. I think slow. one of the things that that saved it was there was probably more Mar and Park Kent than there was in a lot of other episodes that we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, like I said, Park Kent in this show is the fucking solution to. I think he's the cure to AIDS. <laughs> That's about yeah. Bad. Yeah, he was the John Cena of the show. <sighs> Grinding wishes and curing cancer. Yeah. Cat is unbelievable. She is. She's fucking all that woman. I don't. I just. I don't think I've ever even met anyone in real life who is that whorish. I have. 
I've met a couple. <laughs> yeah, the fact that no one can still work out the fact that Clark is Superman it just blows my mind. Ah, uh, I disagree um, with that. Somebody's worked it out. Yeah. Perry, at the end of this oh, episode, yeah. well, Perry White literally, they're, they're drinking champagne, yeah. and Clark makes a comment where he's like, oh, thank God for Superman saving the day. Perry walks over, claps him on the shoulder, and says, yeah, no kidding. And raises a literally raises a glass in Clark's face and with a thank you and walks away and it's like um I was watching I was like you are the you are perfect yeah you perfect are so Barry. perfect perfect Barry. just that perfect like yeah yeah no thank God for Superman huh I mean I'm on Brain's bandwagon on this one like Cat just continues to astound me with the whorish ways she's gone past Felicity on this one it's like going up she, yeah, as a priest. Just like, come on, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. the priest running away was pretty... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's but it's just, uh, it's just got to the point now where I just, I don't understand Kat. I really don't. I don't understand why she's nah. there. Yeah, I mean, if, she, if she's meant to be the whorish gossip queen, yeah, cool, no worries, but she's not in... I don't think she should have been in, like, much more of the episode where she hit on Clark, that's it. To be honest. Is she in the comics at all? Uh, Cat Grant, yes. She's a, she's a there was a there was a point where they stopped working at a paper and they worked at a news station, and she was the celebrity yep. like journalist. So she was, like, she, she was the gossip. She, same job. She just did it for the, the thing I was dead. Yeah, uh, I don't understand her role in or at all. To be a hoe, comic relief. She's there for comic relief. Yeah, it's it's not even comical anymore. Yeah. Enough comical. Behaviour in the others like Mar and Park Kent are great. They're mm. great and they're funny. And um, what's his name? Perry as well. Perry's gold. You know, I watch this. Tech Green, just a redundant character. I watch this show just for Perry. If they called it the Perry, oh, Perry White, Perry Mar and Pa, and like a fat friend sitcom. I want Perry. Something. I want Perry White investigates. That's what I want. That show would be <laughs> fucking amazing. It has to be shot like a nineteen fifties uh, French noir show though. Yeah, like it's probably, work. Yeah, yeah. It'd be great. Perry Mason style. Yeah, see. You, so yeah. let's let's hand out some awards for it, shall we? And some gloves and whatever else. Do you want to go for the f- the the two main awards? Would we'll you go the two main awards? Well, unless you've got something else to throw in. If you go, if you've got people for that for the episodes, feel free. Okay, cool. I just because I have a, I do have a brain and hair award for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll start off there if you like. I have a brain and hair award this week. My brain and hair award for like rapey behaviour. Once again, goes to Lex fucking Luthor, who made a literal <laughs> rape dungeon. He yeah. made a rape dungeon. But it had flowers. Yeah, that's, Mate, yeah. do you know the Austrian J- Fritzel? Josef Fritzel? <laughs> he watched this episode and was like... That is how I should make Lex Luthor, he's on to something. You know, what's, you know, I'm going to take my daughters <laughs> and put her in zones and we've got to have some babies. You know, that's how it's going to work. So I'm actually gonna I really hope he months. didn't sound like that. If I was Hello. shoes, Hello. I would have been the fuck out of there. Yeah. If yeah. you were in Lois's yeah. shoes, it's because you've seen yeah, Lex's eyes. Lex, Lex has the most point. fucking Ted Bundy rape eyes I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like he can light and a fucking I've... cigar with his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I am giving out a Felicity. Uh, Award for her baggery. A hashtag, a hashtag, hashtag Felicity. Can I think about this? Can I, I'll use my Jedi. Yeah, I'm going to take a punt too. Go ahead, Terry. Cat Grant. I'm going to go with the priest. It is, it's, it's Cat Grant. Yeah. Damn. Oh, so close. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Just like, like the priest said to the older boy, oh, so close. Uh, <laughs> it's open mic night. Yeah. Um, I'm going to oh. jump on both of those. I think a lot of people have late jumped on the cat. Yeah. Yeah. She's literally fully seen. She's just, just jump up and down all the way through to shake it all out. Um, Brain's face award goes to Dean Kane. That is one handsome motherfucker. Yeah. He has a nice little hair flick on him. That's, that's annoying. It annoys me how attractive he is. Just, uh, just going back there. Uh, what packet of biscuits is Cat Grant like after a party? Soggy sayos. Mixed creams. Oh. 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 Hey. Hey. Oh. Ah. Oh, that's disgusting. But seriously. <laughs> was that what Gonzo Muppets was it? Or was the blue Muppet you go? Yeah, that was Gonzo. Yeah, it was Gonzo. Um so oh, God. Oh, what a, what about Barbara's? Any Barbara's for this? It's quite obviously Brady. I don't have I don't have a Barbara, it's just the hoe bag and 
Yeah. And yeah, the rapey. Yeah. But I. Like Cranston might surprise you. Well, hang on. Um, hang on, before you get there, before you get there. Hey, 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 We'll see. We'll see later tonight how famous you'll get. You might have some fame coming your way soon, son. Um, you're gonna have a lot of hate coming your way. Oh. I know that one. Mm. I don't have a barber for this one either. Yeah. No, I'm now, Braden, go ahead. Yeah. So for Chris, and I think um, Marin Parkin is probably the obvious choice, but I'm not gonna go Marin Parkin. I'm actually gonna go Jimmy Olsen. Mm. I thought this was a good episode for him in terms of yeah. development as a character, and I enjoyed him. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, let me get me. I've got something to match yours. You know who my Cranston's going to? The homeless guy who found it. Um, Perry White, because he ushers Perry Jimmy White. to become something better. He sees his potential so and goes, true. "You know what, kid? Let's do it. Let's have a shot. If it's your last chunk, let's. I'm gonna give you that shot." Then he's actually like, "Damn, this kid has something to him." I love Perry, man. That relationship was great. So yeah, Perry White gets my Cranston yet again yep. for being Perry White. Yeah, I'm giving out Aaron Pauls to both those people as well. So. I can't give you the whole thing, but so I'll give you a half. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this one's a hard one to glove. I'm, I'm just going to go three. Middle of the line, it wasn't offensive, it was just... Two and a half. Yeah? Yeah. Same so, so, yeah, yeah. It's just, it was a good story. I liked the, the story, and I liked how Superman wasn't completely godlike. Like, he landed and had an asteroid full of him, and he's completely fine. I like the amnesia sort of side of it. That, that was kind of cool. So I'm going to give it two and a half. That's okay. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say two and a half as well. It wasn't. It wasn't a bad episode. It just was slow. Mm, yeah, you could wrap it up in twenty minutes. Then let's move it on to Batman. Batman and Jerry. Batman. Batman. Hot factory. Or wax factory. The ring of wax. The Riddler smuggles a ring of revolutionary new universal wax solvent. Capable of eating through anything into the country by hiding it inside a wax statue of Batman, which is intended for display at Madame Solil's Wax Museum. In place of the wax Batman statue is a wax replica of Riddler, which at its unveiling subsequently sprays the attending audience with a gun filled with paint while a tape recorder announces two riddles. Yeah, did you inside know the Riddler riddles was wrong, by the way? Did you notice that one of the riddles is wrong? The answer is actually wrong. Yeah, we... I'll explain why at the end, but it pissed me off the entire fucking time. I was just like, this entire episode is bollocks. Anyway, continue. Inside his hideout at the Candlelight Candle Factory, the Riddler and his henchgirl, Moth, lead the Batman, melts the Batman figure into a vat of boiling wax. Batman and Robin solve the puzzles and arrive at the Gotham City Public Library and find the Riddler and his henchmen. Tallow and Matches attempting to steal a rare book on the lost treasure of the Incas from the vault with the use of the solvent. A battle breaks out, but the Prince of Puzzles uses his Dr. Riddle's instant forever stick invisible wax emulsion what? To glue the two heroes feet to the floor, enabling him and his gang to escape with the book. Batman and Robin later track Riddler down and are captured and strung up to be lowered into a pool of hot wax. Infamy of infamies! Can this be the end of our beloved Cape Crusaders? Will Batman wax serious? For the sake of our heroes, let's think positively. But it looks bad. Very bad. How can we wait until tomorrow night? Same bat time, same bat channel? Next episode, get in the axe. As Batman and Robin are lowered into the vat of molten wax, the Cape Crusader uses the buckle of his utility belt to reflect a ray of sunlight and open the barrel of an explosive formula. The blast frees him and his trusty chum from their bonds, but also renders them unconscious. Believing his enemies to be dead, 
The Riddler and his gang head for the Gotham City Museum and break into the sarcophagus of ancient Incan Emperor Halupo Kusi, which supposedly contains a lost long treasure. Batman and Robin come to and track the Prince of Puzzles to the museum, but the building is locked, and only the Boy Wonder is small enough to fit in through an open window. Inside, Robin is captured by Matches and Tallow and taken to the Riddler, who's orders, who orders that the lad be tied to a medieval rack and stretched to death. Batman breaks in and a fight breaks out. Once the fight is over, the police arrive and arrest the criminal. Because the police went to the wrong place to begin with. Yeah, well, what is this? Look, man, O'Hara's got a busy job, right? You can't. I don't, I don't know what you want him to do. What do you expect? What like? What do you expect of him exactly? He's just one man. I just, in this crazy. I love world, how you know what immediately mean? every every time something minor happens in Gotham City, they're just like, "Call Batman." Yeah. Well, Someone sprayed paint today. Call Batman. So it didn't just spray paint. It was a wax figure of the Riddler spraying paint. That's enough to ruin anybody's day. It would ruin my <laughs> day. I'd be pretty <laughs> upset. Yeah, this episode this was, was pretty just... For, considering Frank Gorshin was in it, it was just there. Well, yeah. It's, I was disappointed by Frank Gorshin, to be honest. He didn't eat as much sooner, sooner as I thought he should. You know, just... Yeah, I, don't, I, I, thought he, I thought he was quite... Um, quite out there, this episode. Same as always, but... Yeah, no, it was true. Oh, no, he's loud and giggly. Really? That's, that's pretty yeah, much Yeah, so he's still trying to be the Joker. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, uh, Robin was fairly on point with these episodes as well. He wasn't as annoying as, as annoying as normal, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I actually liked when he um, busted into the museum in the at the end of the second episode. Mm, yeah. And um, Showed some they said, oh, I thought you would, well, Batman was dead, and he still sort of played along as if Batman was dead. I'm like, yeah, that was, that was a good move. Yeah. yeah, Robin's pretty. Robin got pretty legit in this episode, but not Robin-y. Nothing. I, I did love the bat battering ram <laughs> on the car too. That was a <laughs> piece of leather with the uh, studs on it. Studs on no, it. It was just let, let's be real. It was the top of a bar stool. Yeah. Strapped to the bat Yeah, it was good. <laughs> like shit, we need a battery ram. You know what? I've got some like. Rat Adam West just went to his trailer and was like, "I have just the thing, chums." <laughs> okay, they get was like, "Why don't you just stick this to the bat <laughs> Always in character. And also, no, it's just Terry Dawes. Um, Matt uh, Matt pointed out something this week that uh, he was quite happy that clearly uh, somehow there was a time paradox and his comments from last week went back in time <laughs> and got into the, the year of six foot six monster out lurch, Alfred himself. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I, I, speaking of lurch... So, what, like, what, what, did you notice it as well? I did notice it? that. I, oh, the, the, the subtlety. Yes, would you like to perhaps happy. explain that for Matt? Because he's not here, so I imagine you can do it more eloquently anyway. Well, instead of going... Bat phone, sir! Master Bruce. It's bat- Kate Ryan! <laughs> it was... Master Bruce, the uh, bat phone's ringing, sir. Very good. And off they went to a fly fishing lesson. So, yes. And Aunt Harriet went on Harriet. Yes. The the but I want to know one thing, Brayden. What, love is? No. Do you want me to show you? <laughs> no. I won't be I want, I, I want I want to know something, Brain, what year were you born? What year was I born? Yeah. Uh, I, I was... I'm, I'm not as old as you folk. Alright. Well, I want to know... I was in 87. How they found someone who looks exactly like you. <laughs> who was six foot six. Yes. Taller than Alfred, helping my man Frankie Gorshin. The guy in the blue striped shirt, <laughs> if you shave this off, dead ringer. I'm not even kidding. I called Adam in from the other room and said, "Hey, look at this motherfucker! Look at this dude!" I'm, I'm going after this. I'm, I'm going back to look at that on the break. Please do. No yeah, I, do. I'm not even kidding. I did. It uh, unfortunately because I filled the board up with so many other uh, other things that I've um. I haven't actually got the uh, the picture of it here on the deck. I apologise, but yeah, it did. It legit. It looks like you with either a porno or a pedo star. Just one or the other. In fact, it's just the star you've got now. I'm actually not kidding. <laughs> the, gap, the gap here is what completes it. I'm not even kidding. Please have a look. It doesn't have the beard though. No, he's just got like a weird hat and the, and the striped shirt. It, I'm not kidding. Yeah, Lurch, Lurch Braden. Lurch Braden. <laughs> right there. 
Dude, if I have to be KO on your Lurch Braden. That's how it is now. Lurch Braden. He's already Tony Stark, though. We already think he's Tony right Stark, Lurch. Yeah, handsome Lurch Braden. Handsome Lurch Braden. And look, you cover up the goatee. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, no kidding. It was just one of these... It was just one of these episodes again where it was, it was kind of cool. It was good fun. It was good for Robins. Yeah, you should just live like that now, Braden. Live like that now. <laughs> uh, it was one of those episodes where it was good for Robin's development. I mean, well, development, he actually, you know, was a Robin. <coughs> this week, you know, he's more like Dick Grayson and should be. But, yeah. I don't know, it's just... I don't know, it's... What can you say? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah. like um, Moth. She was just... Nothing? She was very... Dead. Have you yeah, noticed nothing, that nothing. Batman won't save blonde girls? The blonde bitch died in the first episode because she was too dumb to let him save her. In this episode, he's, he's prepared every other criminally insane bitch except this blonde one. He's like, nope. <laughs> See you later. Not off to the... Uh, what was the Bruce Wayne? Yep. The correctional, correctional facility. Correctional for young girls who I like to bone. There's a flashy pants on my TV. Do you want to glove it and yep. it and nail it and shut it? Pack it away? Yeah, let's do it. Do it! Alright. Any uh, any awards for like rapey behaviour or anything like that? Uh, Lurch Braden is getting that. He just <laughs> scared, he scares me. Lurch Braden scares me. <laughs> like, legit. Braden should not be that tall. That's just how it is. I agree. No Bradens should be that tall. They should not be eye to eye with Alfred, so. No, they should. No, that's too tall. That's, that's even too tall for just a general henchman. You don't, you don't need a henchman that tall. In general, I think, here. generally speaking, you don't want henchmen as tall as you, taller than you, because it gives them power. So, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, I've got my henchman book at home, and that's like number th- rule three, I think. Four, three higher and henchman. Yeah, higher and henchman. It's like the villain's handbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be handy to have. Yeah. Imagine okay. if Batman, that's how Batman's probably so good, he's got the villain's handbook, so he just knows ahead of time what they're going to do. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm giving my barber out to Moth. Okay. Just... I already know who Even when they sent it in the library, like, go to the counter and, and look out for Batman. Batman and Robin comes in, she just sits there just, just looking at him. Just... And when they finally do go through the door to go start going for Riddler, she gets on a little thing. Oh, Batman and Robin are coming. Just, you know, if you want to know. Oh, it was the 60s. She was stoned as shit. She was, she was blind. Yeah. She's... Batman clearly couldn't save her. How evil is this bitch's soul? I'm just saying, she's an inverse base player, as in base players have all the soul and she has none. <laughs> inverse. My uh, Barbara mm. is going to the one and only Harriet. Because she was once again in the episode and it made me want to reach through the screen and punch her. Oh, That's all I got. That's it. Just hate, I hate, I hate that woman. I remember hating her as a kid too. I've hated her my entire life. Months of therapy, and then you've got to review the shit again. <laughs> yeah, like I finally got Harry from my night. Oh, <laughs> Harry flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna jump on board with Harry on this one. It's just, she's a meaningless character. She yeah. really is. She's yeah. just, I think she's there to compliment Alfred <sighs> in the age category, but you know, that's just. She's there for Alfred to bang while they're out. Pretty much, I reckon that's what they do. They go down to the Batcave and just, you know. Put on sex wings. Start swinging around. Slam into the bus. She's all... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And stop There's it. an idea for you. Harry getting banged on the hood of the Batmobile by Alfred. Let's hand out some Cranston's, <laughs> shall we? Uh, I'm going to give mine to Police Chief O'Hara. Okay. Just for being him, man. <laughs> Sorry, we went to the wrong museum. Understandable. Whoopsies. Oops. <laughs> yeah, okay, no worries. That's cool. Yeah, I got cool. this. Uh, before I get to my question, I realise I've got to bring something up before we talk about the episode. Oh, okay. I cracked another code this week. Ready? Here we go. I'm preemptively okay. going to bang my gavel. I'm about to lay, I'm about to lay something on you. Ready? Wax, wax poetic. You ready? You've both seen the IT crowd, right? <laughs> seen the IT crowd, yeah. right? You ready? Commissioner yeah. Gordon is American Matt Berry. Batman, damn these electric sex pants. <laughs> I need Batman because someone has come in here and has fucked with my computers and my electric sex pants. <laughs> he's, the, he's that. The same way Harriet gave birth to Ruth in The Flash, Commissioner Gordon gave birth to Matt Berry in uh, the IT crowd. IT crowd. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. 
Anyway, Cranston's give mine to Robin. Because he actually fuck was abused instead of just Robin, walking around. Robin, not Bert Ward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of walking around being like, I'm, yeah. I'm at John of Craft Services. <laughs> Didn't eat anything, so. No, 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 no. Oh. Fist, the whole fist must go in my mouth when I eat the sandwich. Fat double fist and piece of shit. I'm going to go Frank Orshin. Frank Orshin, you just, whenever he's on, he gets it for me, I think. Frankie gets you hard. Frankie gets Frankie okay. comes alive. Frankie I'm hard to see Frankie. Frankie. Gloves? Two. Two. Actually, that's, wow. that's, why, uh, that's why Bert didn't need anything this week, because Frankie ate it all. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> there was nothing left at the buffet table. Act. He was looking a bit yep. spelt. Okay. But he came alive once. Oh, Jesus. Then he went to Hollywood. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst joke we've ever made on this show. Oh, open mic night. So what was your gloves for this one, Brady? <laughs> Probably two and a half again, I think. Two and a half? One of my gloves is going to, uh, to Giant Lurch, Brayden. <laughs> just, just for being Giant Lurch, Brayden. Giant Lurch, don't let him near you, kitty, Brayden. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking freaky <laughs> moustache. Oh, oh, good times. Should we just move on? Yeah, yeah let's move into Flash. <coughs> no, yeah, Flash. Yeah. I'm not used to saying that. I'm not used to being the last, freaky with my brain. Yeah, because it was the best. I know. It was the fucking best. I know. I, I have so many pictures. Yes. So many it's pictures. So, so get into it. I'm actually going back in time here for our... I'm going to bring up my old review because let's face it, I'm a lazy fat fuck. Eat bad to eat. Eat bad to eat. <laughs> 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 Alright, we have our opening scene with Megan calling Barry saying she's in trouble when suddenly an unknown perpetrator breaks into her car. Barry hears the message on his answer machine and dashes to her aid, much to Tina McGee's dismay because Tina wanted some that night. <laughs> oh, I have a theory. I have a theory why she came up dry too. Oh my. When, when they introduced to ja- we are then introduced to James Jesse, played marvellously by Mark Hamill, a seemingly psychotic criminal who has Megan on a magic stage where he wants to cut her in half with a chainsaw while the show is being watched by a crowd of mannequins. Megan pleads for her life while Barry arrives just in the nick of time. With Jesse starting his chainsaw, Barry arrives and untied <laughs> Megan. Jesse's understandably upset and attacks the Flash with the chainsaw. After a comedic fight scene, the Flash is the victor and Jesse is taken away by the cops. As James Jesse is taken away, he professes his undying love for Megan. Barry has given a lift back to Megan since he has wiped out from the 150 mile run and he hasn't got any food because, you know, he doesn't think forward like that. Megan is then invited by Barry to stay at his house as he feels that she is not safe. Tina is slightly miffed by the invite. Barry offers to stay on the couch and tosses and turns all night only for Megan to come down from the bedroom and passionately kiss him, kiss Barry. James Jesse escapes police custody by killing the two police officers and stealing their car. He then later visits an old prop warehouse where he decides to set up shop, reinventing himself as the trickster. Or Joker Mark One. I like to think this was his Joker audition tape. Uh, pretty much was, yeah. Just submitted it to the animated series and was like, maybe? Joker maybe? Will you call me maybe? Here's my number, Joker <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Megan and Barry are at a cafe chatting about why she is in Central City when they're interrupted by Julio. Julio casually mentions to Barry that he needs to make his mind up when Tina then enters, mentioning that she's looking forward to the policeman's ball on the weekend, which Barry cancels. <laughs> Tina was looking forward to some Barry's policeman's balls. That was implied in the way I read it. Barry is at the police department, and one of the officers talks about the theory that another officer, Murphy, is a flash. Although it sounds silly, they play along and have fun with it. Barry is informed that James has escaped and possibly in Central City. Trickster is paying the trickster movie, and we are shown that his delusion with Megan is getting worse. <coughs> I'm reading this down and I'll read this horribly. Barry and Megan are at the park where Megan is sharing a sob story when Trickster arrives and with a trailer in tow, announcing that to all he would deflate the Flash. He drives away, leaving the trailer, which has a 10-foot Golden Age Flash statue holding a bomb. Flash appears and takes two nearby, nearby children away, just in time for the bombing to go off. At Central City Police Department, Captain Garfield implies that the Flash is responsible for all the latest costume crooks. Trickster is robbing a prop store. Megan tries to apprehend him with the Flash but they are foiled by ball bearings on the street. Star Labs Tina is looking every over... Every time. <laughs> every damn time. Star Labs Tina is looking over Barry's knee when she implies that she has no real social life, shooting a glare at Barry. Megan runs off to find the trickster. Barry is told that he can't be everyone's knight in shining red armour. Megan tracks down the trickster down to a prop warehouse where she is now. 
held hostage. They should get taken hostage. Stupid Megan, why is she always getting taken hostage? Because she's bad at her job. Fair enough. Megan tracks the truth down where she becomes hostage. Soon after, a text from the FBI arrives at Barry's work saying she is tracking. he is tracking James Jesse. The FBI agent is at Barry's house before Barry arrives and mentions that he has a message. It's Megan saying that she has found the trickster and at the warehouse it is revealed that FBI agent was not under than the trickster, capturing both Barry and Megan. Trickster then attempts to kill Barry to win Megan over. Before Barry is dead, Trickster leaves with Megan in tow and Barry escapes, as per superhero formula. At Barry's place, Tina arrives and they hatch a plan to catch tri Trickster. Barry comes up with the idea of a clash of the Titans in the middle of the policeman's ball. Later at the policeman's ball, the Trickster tries to guess the room, but to no avail upon the arrival of the Flash. After some corny one-liner explosions and a cartoon reference to the Trickster is apprehended. Screaming from the back of a paddy wagon, Trickster screams, I'm the Flash, furthering, you know, his... Delusions. Delusions. Barry is told by Megan that she needs to go and he and he objects, settling for her riding from San Francisco. They live together into the sunset. Alright, first things first. My theory on why Tina struck out. Do you notice she wasn't blonde in this episode? True. True that. He just, he, another brunette rolls in and he's like, oh, I can't decide. If she'd have stayed blonde, he would have been like, nah. Blonde English chick. Problem solved. So there you go, that's why this one is. So, don't, so ladies, don't go for it. Mm -hmm. yes, um, now, first things okay. first. I got, I got this one here. You talked about it earlier. Here's the statue. Have a look at it. No Jay Garrett. That's marvellous, that one. Now, I just wanted to show that because I thought that was a cool prop. Oh, no, it is. It's fantastic. Now, let's uh, let's talk the two cops, shall we? <laughs> let's talk bu Buddy and oh. Murphy, as I, as, Buddy and Murphy. as I assume they're called. So you got Buddy and Murphy, but Murphy's got the moustache. And uh, Buddy, his partner, thinks that he's a Flash, so Murph turns up with a costume ball dressed like this. Apparently that's the Flash. Ugh, that's hard. Uh, I don't know what I'm it's looking at. I think that's Poo-Age Flash. <laughs> that's Poo-Age Flash right there. Alright, let's get that off the screen. Let's talk some costumes, because there were some great costumes in this episode. First of all, we had, as you can see, yeah. the trickster in his, uh, in his beautiful leotard. Onesie, showing yeah. Showing off a bit of nut. That's a whole lot of nut. He, uh, he put uh, was Megan in a leotard as well. Yep. And uh, just, just to wrap it all up... Hashtag them tits. Put on a bit of a moustache and made everybody think that he was the FBI. Look at that moustache. For me, Mark... That's Hale a moustache better than the Brayden moustache we had earlier. That's what were you saying, Brayden? That was a good costume. He didn't yeah. look like him. That was a good yeah. disguise. See, that's the funny thing. I think Mark Hamill's hugely underrated as a screen actor. Oh, he's... He's so underappreciated. underappreciated. Massively underappreciated. So underrated and underused. Because everybody just thinks he's, he can only do Luke Skywalker. But he's, he's only Luke Skywalker. He didn't do anything else. Like, you know, he was the trickster for 20 odd years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fucking... Nah. And finally, what must have been what literally my favourite moment of the episode. Yes. Okay. So Trickster goes to his warehouse, right? Yes. So there you see it. He pulls up in his car. He's at the warehouse. Yep. Now, when he gets to the warehouse, he goes to a window with a four-leaf sign on it. Yep. Climbs through the window. It shuts behind him. And he just goes, LEAST! <laughs> My favourite moment. <laughs> I was just like, that was ridiculous and amazing. That was just a comic book. So yeah. Yeah. That was just hands down. My favourite moment of the episode was LEAST. Yeah. Last so there you go. That's my, that's my picture show for The Flash this week. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoyed that. Mate, this episode was great. It was great. It's great because of Mark. The flat, the, the trickster was an actual like has a massive body count. He's mows through dudes. He's an actual villain. Yeah, it's two in the first five minutes. He just blows away those cops and is like, "Well, time to go." Like, <laughs> what the fuck? That it's, was awesome. Yeah, I love, and I love the fact that this is a is a villain is not who goes. Oh, it's the hours between eight a.m. to five p.m. <laughs> I'm going to stay indoors. No, fuck your motherfuckers. He's I'm going crazy out. He's as shit. Even down to the whole, like, he's, he's obsessed, she's the one, they're like, yeah, so were the other 12 girls you killed. Yeah. And it's like, what <laughs> the fuck? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And I think Mark Hamill actually forces everyone to actually sort of rise to his level. Oh, he's so good. He fucking ate everything. He's so good. There was no set left. That's why this only had one season. There was no set left. So he'd say, yeah, well, I brought this up in the chat. And do you know why there was no set left? Because I swear to God, Mark Hamill is the grandson of Frank Gorshin and he's just eating the LSD acid sets. No, he's not having LSD. That's the thing. It's in his blood. It's genetic. It's bound in his DNA. Well, it's because Frank Gorshin had so much that it... 
Well, his sperm was 60% LSD. Yeah, 40% protein and, and genetic material. Yeah, and, and 60% LSD. 60% acid. Yeah. Brad, what do you think of this episode? I I love me some Mark Hamill. I love me some Mark Hamill in... Uh, I love me some Joker Mark Hamill, and this is pretty close to that. This so. is PG Joker. Um, yeah. And you, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head saying Mark Hamill makes everyone else sort of rise to his level because yep. this episode was great. It really was. Yeah. Um, Tina gave me the shits, kind of. Fuck you, I love Tina. Jealousy. I love Tina. Mm-hmm. Tina and Barry mm-hmm. forever. He's not even playing the guitar. He's not even running fast. Yeah. <laughs> that footage was clearly sped up. He wasn't tossing and turning that fast. This is bullshit. I mean, come on. Oh. No, just the, the clear annoying shit it just annoys me. It bugs me. Because she's not blonde anymore. You can't uh, look past the annoyance. Yeah, it's her own fault. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Even, um, yeah, the two cops you were talking about, like, that was pretty comical, sort of. Buddy and Murphy. I'll bring, uh, it, back. I'll bring, up Buddy. I'll bring it back. Hang on. They're great. I well, love Buddy those. Buddy and Murphy, there they are. They're great, those two. And it's great. Just the whole, the whole situation between them and him thinking he's the Flash and... Yeah, Murphy's just plays with it. He's getting name? struck up for a uh, half an hour or Buddy. whatever, and then he's... Oh, you were running around as a Flash. No, you dickhead. I was hanging up just behind you. He said feet. he got struck up by a noose. Let that sink in. Yeah. He got noosed. He got lynched. He got noosed at the feet, didn't he? It doesn't say where. He just said he got noosed. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I know where a noose goes. You go lynching with a noose. You don't go, let's hang a guy. You don't string a guy up. I mean, he can, but that's dumb. You can't strangle a leg. This episode was made by um, Mark Hamill. I really enjoyed yeah. it. No, it was Mark, made for Mark Hamill. Yeah, like I said, it was his audition tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it's saying, hey, like it was made good by Mark Hamill. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. I'm going to bring out something that is clearly universal to anybody who writes The Flash. At one point, Megan calls Jesse James... No, calls James Jesse, like Jesse James, but backwards. Only psychotic and like a killer. It's like, no, that was Jesse James. Mm-hmm. Backwards Jesse James. We're like, he's like Jesse James, but backwards. You know, he gives to charity and, and takes kids in, grants cancer wishes. Mm-hmm. John Cena is the reverse Jesse James. Uh, your answer is... Buddy? No, it is Officer Bellows. I'm close. Pretty close, it's Buddy. Like Tony Bellows and Michael Murphy. It's Buddy. Buddy and Murphy from now on. Yeah, no one's arguing with that. They're Buddy and Murphy. That's fair, that's fair. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's let's hand out some awards for this one. Let's go Barbara's first, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to guess Braden's is going to Tina. Yeah, go on, Tina. Go on, Tina. She just hugged me. I'm going to give mine to... Uh, give mine to Megan for the exact same reasons. Yep. I'm going with Megan purely because... Stop being a fucking idiot and going by yourself. You've tried it once already. You, you failed. Stop. Just Stop. Let's hand out the Cranston then. Okay, ready? On the count of three. On the count of three. One, two, three. Mark Hamill. Man, that Mo internet Easy. lag. Yeah. Brave's like five and a half seconds behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that might just be because he's from Mo. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm going to give it, give my brain's face award to Mark Hamill as well, purely because of the fact he can actually pull off that many different looks that look different every time. He pulls off a unit. Yeah, that's He pulls off a unit. That's... And rare. a domino mask. And, like, he pulls off Frank Gorshin's costume mm-hmm. in a show where nobody else is dressed that, that ridiculous. Yep. And yet, no point... And he still... He probably looks more menacing dressed like that than he does yep. in street clothes. To, to be honest, like, I, I when the, he came on as the FBI agent, I actually didn't know it was him until he started speaking, like, ugh... Damn, son. Take my money. Please. Please. Mm. Suck me, beautiful. Not to that point, but... <laughs> little bit. Oh. Little bit. Gloves. All of them. Really? I love this fucking episode. I love it. Mario. Mario. <laughs> I give this the JBL glove. Wow. That's the JBL glove. That's a big glove. That's a huge... That's a Texan-sized glove. That's a lot of glove. I'm giving it four. Cool. Yeah, I got four and a half. Wow. Love it. All right, well, at that point, let's let's take a little bit of a break, and we'll come back with uh, our response to Elicity, and, of course, Batman Superman Apocalypse and the Mailbag. Thank you for being a friend. 
travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, he invited everyone you knew. You would see the biggest gift would be from me and the card attached. Oh, my God, your tears are delicious. All right, welcome back to round two. <laughs> now, that was obviously our reply to... Felicity fans. Uh, gentlemen, I mean, no, we obviously know how Honeybad feels about it, but but still, let's get into it. How did you feel about uh, about the response there, our, our response? How do you, let, let's review our own response before they can do it to us. Mm. I mean, obviously, that, nobody, I, nobody, I nobody, you nobody know, is playing a guitar. You so. nailed it, really. We nailed the it? The tears were delicious, okay? Yeah. The point of our video was to get us, like, I guess, a bit of publicity, yeah. but to express how we feel about a certain topic which got us a fair bit of heat. Which mm -hmm. Oh, a lot of heat. Too much heat. Central heating. It's delicious. If it was, if it was winter, it would be fantastic. If, if Vince McMahon had wrestlers with the amount of heat that we've had in the last 48 <laughs> hours, he'd be fucking loving it. <laughs> yeah, he would. He most definitely would. If, you know, a minute, a minute intro... It, uh, little ad thing that we made I'm, I'm wondering how much heat oh we'll get we'll get heat I hope so I, I we'll want that I want to get hate mail we're gonna we're getting to the point we now because we, we just have, we have got a couple of little tweets since we've been on break uh, first what? one saying ad from Bad Cave this gave me life nice haha ha, hashtag, hashtag no elicity hashtag more red fear hashtag more canary cry absolutely wunderbar somebody gets it and the next says Ad from Bad Cave, dude, this is painful and not because it's solicity hate. Embarrassing. <laughs> so, let's just, let's, let's move on from that for now. Let's move into the, the movie of the week, shall we? The movies. The movie, yeah? Should the we do movies? it? Batman vs. Yes. Superman yeah. Apocalypse? Right, well, I've, I have the trailer ready to go because I'm exceptional at my job. So, here we go. We're all here because each of us, in our own way, fights with the hope of a better tomorrow. You didn't think you could just walk away, did you? This ends now. Superman, Batman, Apocalypse. Went all out with that fucking trailer. Didn't they? Damn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, basic premise of this one. Supergirl lands. Everybody wants Supergirl. Fight. Yeah, round one. Bing, bing. That's the best premise of this film. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to let you two speak because I really don't have much to say about this film. Oh, okay. Interesting. I really don't like it. Oh, fair enough. You don't like it? Well, I, can, I kind of understand where you're coming from with that because I didn't really think much happened. Nope. No, no. So they that, cut out so everything from the comics that gave, was, was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, Supergirl lands, Batman finds her, she goes a little bit AWOL, Superman turns up, uh, then Wonder Woman turns up, they want her, Darkseid turns up, takes her, they fight for her, the end. The comic book, okay, the last one we looked, we watched was based on one trade, which was eight issues, right? Mm -hmm. This one, mm -hmm. which goes for less time, is based on 16 issues, and they cut out all, like, the, like, 
heartfelt shit. This is the one. Wow. This, this remember how I told you a few weeks ago. There's a comic book I love where Batman learns kryptonite. Uh, learns kryptonese. kryptonese. Yeah. In a few hours. Mm-hmm. It's this. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one, it's uh, Cora who learns English in a matter of hours. So that happens in the thing too. Yeah. That's why, because the comment is like, she learned English in a few hours, cut her, cut her some slack, and he's like, I learned Kryptonese in the same amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's def- I know where you're coming from, where it's, it, there's not a lot that does happen. I still, I, I enjoy it. I didn't mind. I didn't feel like I waste, yeah, wasted I an hour of my what did happen, but... Yeah, it wasn't, like, not... It didn't feel like much happened at all, really. No, no. I mean, for me, it was... It was bits of... It was, it was little moments of fun that were, like, sort of pasted together. You know? Yeah, I agree. And, and the majority, they come out of Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Batman ba- Batman does win quite a lot in this. Uh, oh, God, does he win. <laughs> for me, I enjoyed Cora, though. I, I enjoyed, um, you know, her, her end fight scene. Uh, but for me, being... Me being me, I enjoyed the animation style as well. I enjoyed a lot more than I enjoyed uh, Public Enemies. But I enjoyed Public mm-hmm. Enemies more of a story than a story than I did this. Uh, I, for me, Superman comes off as a bitch in this. I, I, it's Superman is the one consistent thing in the comic that that, yeah. that 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 Superman is exactly what's in the comic. Yeah, it's just a wham wham. Like yeah, it's just Superman it's, is though the weakest of the Justice League. You know, it's, I, it, he comes off constantly like, I'm a rare breed, if there's another one, I should protect them, and I know what's right. It's like, fuck off, man. I I have no time for yeah. that. You know, like, the scene where um, Kara gets taken to, uh, what, Isle, Isle of Paradise? Is that what it's, uh, Wonder Woman's... Themyscira. Themyscira. Um, gets taken away and trained. That's, that's necessary. Yep. And Batman knows that, and Wonder Woman knows that, even... Kara knows that, but Superman sits there and gets his cape in a twist. So, <laughs> yeah, it's dude. You know, it's everyone can see what's going on except for Superman in this, and that annoys me. You know, yeah, he's like he sees what he wants to see. Exactly, exactly that, and it's just uh, the argument you get from Superman fans is like, you know, he's he's, he's intelligent, he's strong. It's like no, he's a bitch with super strength. It's that's what it is. That's what it is for me. And this this story actually sort of reaffirms that why I don't like Superman as much as I like the other members of the Justice League. But I didn't let Superman join our league. The Justice. Ah, oh, sorry. Justice. Sorry. I mean, I mean, I missed that together constant. And I thought it was a. <laughs> but yeah, it's... I really felt that final end um, fight scene between. Dark Side, Supergirl, and Superman was just because they got to the end of the movie and went, wait, nothing really happened, did it? Oh, we better chuck an extra cool fight scene in there. No, I actually didn't. I didn't mind that. Because it actually showed up. I didn't Superman. mind it, but that's kind of felt like to me. Yeah. For me, it kind of showed up Superman as well, like Supergirl's, you know, because she's younger and she's, she, I don't know, absorbed the sun's rays, whatever. But I, I enjoyed the that. The problem I had with the end of this film is, what was the, before the, the part of Apocalypse, what are the two words? Of the name of this film, Batman and Superman. Well, Superman, Batman. Superman, Batman. But yeah, but Superman, uh, yeah it should be Batman. Should be Batman. Okay, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Cool. Batman, this film this ends, ends with just Superman. Superman. Yeah, yeah. Like Batman, Batman just pieces out about thirty Batman minutes for the end. Is like, yeah, like, I'm done. Yeah, I'm good. I don't have to do any more heroing, even though you know that if fucking a boom tube opens up on Earth, the first person there is well, Superman. Batman. The second person is Batman. Yeah, because he's got to fire up the jet. Yeah. Like so it's like yeah, somebody's ripping up, up fucking Kansas. Kansas. I'm getting down yeah. there yeah. because yeah. both fucking Kryptonians are gonna die. Yep. Yeah. Or Kryptonians are gonna die. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, I I do enjoy it though. Like um like I've given it to my copy to a, a mate of mine who's got a couple of kids because I know they'll enjoy it. It'll be encapsulating for like the say the five year old up till twelve year old maybe. Is that once, uh? Is it Turtle? You gave it to? Yeah, that's Turtle. Nice. So shout said, out to my man Turtle and his lovely wife. <laughs> so I gave him a copy, uh, my copy of uh, Public Enemies uh, or Public Enemies and uh, Apocalypse. So, nice. so they, I said, watch it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Front to back. The kids today, eh? Yeah. I mean, it may very well have been cut down for a certain demographic, like um, Adam was saying. It's from a sixteen tray. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you were to make that 16 trade... The, the probably, first... Probably like a three everything that leads into the, the search for Kara... Basically, before Supergirl lands, because mm-hmm. Supergirl is 
Um, well, si- sorry. Okay, the, the, the basic, basic premise of the comics is that Supergirl lands and there's all that kryptonite and shit, mm-hmm. and then shit starts happening with her, and in the meantime, Batman and Superman are trying to clean up all the kryptonite, so you get the yeah, Supergirl saga, and then what's called the search for kryptonite, where they realise how much is on the planet, so Batman basically makes a pact with Superman, alright, I'll get rid of all of them. Yeah. I'll clear the earth of kryptonite, yeah. so that you can do what you have to do. So, why don't you do bit? Exactly. Um, but they kind of combine both the stories in this because that's actually where the fight with Doomsday, uh, not Doomsday, the fight with Darkseid come, at the end comes from the end of that. Oh, okay. Because they piss him off. Mm. Like, they, 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 Batman basically is like, fuck off, and like, bazookas him into a boom tube and he fucks off, then comes back to Earth and he's like, did you think? Yeah. And that's why Kara finally puts him out into space and is like, yeah, now he's properly... Because yeah. Batman, Batman sends him back home. Mm. Batman's not complete. As psychotic as he is, Batman's like, just go back. Just leave. Yeah, just leave, leave. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like I, 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 I can't say anything more about it. There are parts in that I enjoy, like um, Batman saying, yeah, sure, on a reporter's salary, you got to pay me back a 50 grand computer. Um, there's little quips in there, but to be honest... Yeah, I agree. Just yeah, the strong part in this was Batman. I did enjoy the villain Dark Side. Um, yeah, he Doomsday did. Clones. Sorry, no, was it? Is it Doomsday? The clones that they sent out to Themyscira? Yeah, but yeah. Dark Side is still a yeah. his own independent Dark Side. Dark Side is uh, Thanos, basically. Yeah, yeah. Except hmm. cooler, yeah. with way better boots. Yeah. <laughs> I bought, I legitimately, I bought a figure of Darkseid just because I was like, look at this dude's costume. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> literally, it's the boots. Every time I'm like, yeah, that's some he was... stomping boots. Sorry, Brayden, you were saying. But he was, pretty thre- he was pretty threatening. And then even the manner which um, Batman sort of didn't beat him, but sort of made a deal with him. Psychologically was destroyed him. Yeah. 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 It's just like, it, even bad. Darkseid called it the way the way we would call it. Like Superman and Wonder Woman wouldn't have had this in them to do this, no. and you're just a person and you've done it. Like because you're I human, you. you kill each other in your own wars. Like blowing yeah. up my planet isn't going to mean anything to you. Yeah. And but I love the fact, yeah. Batman. You can tell Batman is serious. Like I'll nuke the fuck out of your planet. Yeah. Do do it. What do you like? Yeah. Your options are either fuck off or I destroy you. Yeah. Which is why I love that because the continuity there obviously is that in the final crisis, which is the third crisis, mm-hmm. Darkseid kills Batman, or seems to kill Batman. But Batman sacrifices mm. himself to shoot Darkseid through the head. It's the one time he uses a gun and he shoots him through the fuck and he's just like, I've had enough of you. Bang. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you do? But anyway. So, I mean, not much more to say really, is there? I mean, I'm kind of... I've said my piece. To be honest. Yeah, I... I guess I, the stuff I, I've got things to say is more in the award section because there's, there's things I like and things I don't. But yeah, right. this, well, this I mean, film's just very... It's the, everything this week except for The Flash was just there. Yeah. This exists. Especially after the last film. The last film had so much really cool action and clever humour. There's no humour in this film either. Not or really. very little of it. Yeah. And like, there's like a, a, a 30 to 40 second if not two minute montage of Kara trying on clothes yeah yeah. like why the fuck is that in there yeah I don't understand I think it's well, once again comes to the demographic they're aiming for they must have been aiming at like young girls because it's the only thing I think of where you take the Supergirl the strong independent I don't need no man woman and just make her like are oh, you like shopping and lipstick and clothes it's like wow and hot dogs wow what, like way to yeah. what if what if this is <laughs> this girl is like a role model to yeah I love dogs too. <laughs> They're not really dogs, are they? I did love the fact Astro doesn't like her. No, like Astro is Astro. Crypto. Yeah, crypto. 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 Crypto like doesn't like her. Crypto. Oh, yeah. found her. You found him good judge. Yeah. Character. He's like, yeah. Um, Superman's like, she's staying. You got a problem with that? He's like, no, but the dog might. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's little bits, but it's just like, it's only in the first half an hour there's anything interesting that it just peters off. Yep. Anyway, hand out your barbers, gentlemen. Granny goodness. It's a good answer. Granny goodness. I thought about that. And it's just one of those where I I'm like, about that. eh, you know, oh, she's an essential character. I'm not saying she's not. But she's just... Shit. Shit. She is my Harriet. I was going to say, she's, she's my Harriet. Harriet. She is my Harriet for this, so she gets my barbed wire. 
She gets a barber with a bonus Harriet award. Mm -hmm. Alright, Brayden, who are you giving your barber to? Probably going to say Superman, to be honest. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, he was just shit. (laughs) (laughs) Shit, he really was. Mine goes to Kara. Kara? I love Supergirl, as anybody who know me will know. I love Supergirl. Love you some Supergirl? I fucking hate this Supergirl. It's not Supergirl. She's not strong, she's not independent, she's fucking dumbass. And even time she wants to be independent, it's like, I want to be independent so that I can go shopping. Or there is the part of the arena where she turned around and said to Clark, look, you know, I get a vote. That's the only independent time. Yeah, and they told her to fuck off. She was like, okay. I'm just going to, I'm going into my camera so that you can really make out my face here, Terry. Okay. Now, I'm sorry, that pony's had owls. For, for you for you guys at, at, um, at home, that's my, I just saw Jeremy Renner face. That's what it looks like. I got the same thing. She rented me. So, Kara gets not only my Barbara, she gets my Renner. So, um, actually, alright, conversely then. Uh, conversely, inversely. Inversely. We'll talk about, like, the Supergirl pilot. We'll briefly go back on that subject. Yep. That, while. Yep. that Supergirl, would you say that's an accurate representation? Because she's yep. an independent young woman. That Supergirl time. is the best, like, including the movie that we'll be covering in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. That's the best representation of Supergirl we've had. Excellent. So, they don't, don't Felicity and all Yeah. No, that is, that is Supergirl. She's okay. meant to, like, she's... Because she's not dizzy, but she's just like, I want to help, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Not too like, sure, you know. That sort of thing. Like, she's she's flighty, if you'll pardon the pun. Hmm. And that's what makes Supergirl great. This Supergirl isn't that. This Supergirl's just like, uh, uh, Yeah. I'm Kryptonian and stuff. For instance? I'm, I'm going Batman. <laughs> okay, yeah. why? So, 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 yeah. Oh, hey, you want, you didn't, you, I know what you forgot to bring up. Oh. You want to give it to Batman, I'm pretty sure you give it to Batman for this and this alone. Yeah, pretty much. Boom. Pretty much. Batman with a battle axe. Now, if you give this man a weapon on of any sort, your day is, you're going to have a bad time. The worst part is, he gets a bazooka later on, the axe still looks a lot more menacing than this fucking Transformers bazooka that he has. Well, actually, there was a study in America that, uh, at, oddly enough, that when people are being held up, Right by, say a mugger, um, they'll scream out. That they, they, they'll scream if there's a gun involved. When there's a knife or a blade involved, everyone's like, "No, fuck that," because it's the psychological. I'm dead real quick with a with a gun. Not so dead quick with a knife. Yeah, knives hurt. Knives like, hurt. But like gunshots hurt, but yeah, you shock's pretty quick and you don't feel it as yeah. So that's why like the, they did a test and it's like a lot of the time it's just because the idea of like a slicing motion on your mm-hmm. body and it's just like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck that shit, I'm out. Uh, okay, Brayden, who are you giving your Cranston to on this one, then? I'm definitely giving my Cranston to Batman as well. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, he was was the best character in this movie, hands down, really. He was okay. in control of every situation, and if it's something Batman. slightly went out of his plan, he very quickly pulled it back in. Yep. Um, he was the one. He was the one who beat Darkseid. He's the hero of this movie, really. Mm-hmm. Except for the last 20 minutes. Uh, I'm giving my Cranston... You ready? Yes. I'm giving my Cranston um, to, in my opinion... I would say under, one of the most underrated characters in the DC Universe, but that's not really true. I'd say underappreciated or appreciated for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. My Cranston goes to Wonder Woman. Yep. Because Wonder Woman took on Superman and yep. beat him. Tells him to eat a fat bag of dicks. <laughs> she ho- she basically takes out two Kryptonians at once. Yep. And it's just like, nope, fuck this. <laughs> so just backs away slowly. She gets she gets my cramps and especially she's like she just loops fucking she nooses much like we had earlier in the flash with Murph. Yeah. She nooses Kara's foot and yep. hoists her up. Um, yeah, that the honorable mention though goes to Batman for knocking Kara out with a cr- chunk of kryptonite. Yep. That was so Batman as shit. Just I like, did. you've had fun. Bang. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die now. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> Wonder Woman gets by Cranston because when Wonder Woman is done right, she is so amazing. But when she's done wrong, she is so criminally painful. Yeah. And this was Wonder Woman done right. Yeah. And so they think this is Wonder Woman done right for the first time, yet we've seen how many JLA films at this point? We've seen this is Wonder Woman done right. Yeah. We've seen not a lot of JLA at the moment. We'll no, we've seen, we've seen two or three. We've seen two or three, but we get. And she's stuff. normally very, very poor in them. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, we're going to get to the good stuff. We're getting there. We're, we're getting there. there. But we've, we've, got to, we've got to meet everybody on the team before we bring the team together. We've got to have everybody's individual backstories. Mm. And then we can go to the bar where everyone knows your name. And then you have a montage. Oh, gloves? For the right demographic, I'll give it four out of five. But for my demographic, I'll give it a two and a half. Okay. I'll give it a three. Not offensive, just... There. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to agree. I'll give it a three. It was enjoyable, but not much happened. Let's move it on then to... Badger, my badger. Reference to Captain, my captain, but that's fine. That sounds a little weird. Uh, oh, my. Oh, my. The question for this week was, if you could have your last supper, anyone you wanted there, who would you have there? That would include yourself and 12 others. Yourself and 12 others. Now, this was resigned to comic book arenas, wasn't it? It was. Plus, we got to delve into the WWE. Well, we have our Marvel, Marvel, Marvel Comics Marvel. produced Marvel. WWE Comics. Therefore, I was just about to bring that up and be like, I found a loophole. Fair enough. I found a loophole this week. Absolutely fine. Absolutely. Gotta find your loopholes, mate. That's 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 ninety percent of law is finding a loophole. <laughs> that is. Be like, hey, Your Honor, it says in the law that I can only be tried for murder if if I hold the knife. Yeah. I threw it and with if... a sling. <laughs> and if there is a body, no body, no crime. Yeah, it's not true. Just go with it. What's up? We do have a response from Mrs. Turtle. Okay, Mrs. Turtle. Well, we need we need a name for Mrs. Turtle. So we, we'll come we up with something. We'll come up with something. For now, she's Mrs. Turtle. Mrs. Turtle. Why are we calling her Mrs. Turtle? Because her husband's Turtle. Oh, okay, right. Have, have you seen, seen Entourage? Entourage? No, I can't say I have. Okay, her, her husband, husband, her husband, yeah, yeah, Entourage is amazing and you're as shit as math for not having seen it. But um, in Entourage, there's one character named Turtle, and the first time I met this particular gentleman, I was just like, he had a, he had like a beanie or something called, but he yeah. basically had covered his hair and he had the pencil beard, and I was sitting in the car and I'm like, fucking turtle <laughs> it's like later season skinny turtle this is amazing <laughs> so he just became turtle so now he's turtle so Mrs. Turtle Mrs. Turtle has 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 bent the rules a little bit now I've got to count these out so her lineup would include you want to, I understand we have a visual aid to help we though. do have a visual aid can you, can you read it out her response here yes we have Robert Danny Jr. from Iron Man 1 okay there's yep Robert Downey Jr. from Iron Man 2. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. from Iron Man 3. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. from The Avengers. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. from Avengers Age of Ultron. Yes. Then we have Chris Hemsworth from Thor. Yes. Chris Hemsworth from The Avengers. Yes. Chris Hemsworth from Thor 2. Yes. Chris Hemsworth from Avengers Age of Ultron. Excellent. Then we have Chris Evans from Captain America. Yes. Chris Evans from The Avengers. Chris Evans from Captain America Winter Soldier. Yes. And Chris Evans from Avengers Age of Ultron. Nice. That's and 14. And what she can do, because your table will be set up thusly. So you've got like your few on there. Right? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 seats, right? And you've got to have your cameraman here to do the or well, the painter there for the, for the oil painting. So what you do if this one, this Chris Evans here wants to go to the bathroom, you, can you do it. You do a quick change out. Oh, so you've got a, you've you got alternate. alternate. Yeah, you can alternate. You've got right? alternate. So you've got uh, you've got your Chris Evans Winter Soldier here having a Gatorade ready, get, getting ready. And right. we're limbering up. Limbering up, and then coming to the post. So and Avengers yeah, Age of Ultron, Chris Evans is going to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just make sure everyone can see it. On the, yeah, beautiful. And then you've got you've got an RDJ here. You've got four. So oh, maybe yeah. one wants to, one's gluten intolerant, so he needs to go to the kitchen and complain. So he's he's gone to the kitchen to complain. So you've got the non lact then you've got the lactose intolerant RDJ coming in. Right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right. So then you've, you've also got you've also got your, your Hemsworths here, gone off to get some meat, and then one can come back in with some more meat, and they can constantly do a refreshing cycle. Ah, oh, so then they're constantly on their protein kicks. So they can absolutely, go, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. He's going to hit those muscles in the pack. Absolutely, and then you've got like uh, Robert Downey Jr. here from Iron Man One, who's just you know just sitting there going, I, am oh, Iron I did, Man. I did miss somebody. Sorry, yes. his husband is also Turtle's also got to be Turtle's also in there. So but, basically, except, but I, I can imagine that, that no one Turtle, I think he'd operate the camera. He would. He'd, he'd, he'd be, be here. He'd be like, no, that's fine. It, I can add comment. He's absolutely fine. See, see, the thing is with the parfait. See, the kitchen is located over here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Through the double doors. Right. You're yeah, right. Double doors. So. As a kitchen, you actually have to walk this way. So he has a constant refreshing. He's, he's, he's pretty much getting the brand new food. 
Yeah, he's getting the, the appetizers and the Absol- fresh out the oven. So yeah, so basically, you're, you're traveling a, a thusly direction. So she's cracking the code. Thank you very much, Mrs. Stone, for writing in. Yeah, you wipe that off. Well, Terry's wipe wipe that off, Brayden. Did uh, did you fuck me? This is hard to. Did you have any luck thinking about? Uh, <laughs> I wish you all could see the fucking shit I have to get into to sit in this fucking Kevin Owens motherfucker's chair. Uh, Brayden, did you have any ideas about your last supper while I, like, attempt to get out of this fucking downward dog position? <laughs> yeah, I, I did have a bit of a think about it. I did struggle to fill all 12 uh, places. But this is what I did come up with. I, well, I do want Thor there because his table manners are just... Oh, wait, wait. Do you, do you want blue? Do you want blue or green? So here's your table, right? So you've got yep. four. Yep. Yep, four's in there. Just because his table manners are just in, incredibly entertaining and appalling at the same time. Okay. Uh, uh, right next to each other, we've got Captain America and Iron Man because those two are going to be arguing like little bitches and, again, table conversation. So we, need, we need something to talk about. You want to next to each other? Next to each other, you said? So we've yep, got right Cap- next to each other. Captain America is here. Iron Man is yep. here. Thor's on. Yep. Thor's here. Yep. So right next to me in the centre, we've got Spider Man. Because I'm going to be like, "Oh, Spider Man, can you pass the salt?" And he'll be like, "Fucking web sling." Oh, and hey, bam, yeah, with the plan. salt. Yep. Okay. So Spidey uh, and you. Yep. Yep. Down the other end, we've got next to each other Deadpool and Alfred. Oh. <laughs> Which Alfred? This is this is Sean Pertwee Alfred. Ooh, ooh, I love it, mate. Because Deadpool's, Deadpool's going to be like, "Oi, mate, can you Deadpool go get me some more beer?" And he'll be like, "I'm a butler, mate." So and he will you'll just be giving him shit constantly. So Deadpool Alfred. So who, yep, who's Deadpool, next to you Alfred. then? Yep, yep. Um, somewhere in there, it doesn't really matter where, but Aquaman's going to be in there somewhere. We'll put Aquaman um, in we, we are, we the we are serving section. fish, so we're all laughing at Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman's over there. Yep, yep. Um, probably on the other side of me than where uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man is, we've got uh, Catwoman. Because this, let's face it, this is a massive sausage fest. That is fair. Uh, we've also got Blade. He's in there somewhere too. Nice. Uh, he's the token black guy. <sighs> Why wouldn't you have gay Hispanic Spider-Man though? Oh, we could we could have done that, but I, I do quite enjoy Blade. So, and we know we won't be getting any vampires dropping in on this last supper too. Uh, that is as far as I got. So you've got three places left to fill. I do have three places left to fill. Um, I, I was going to invite Batman, but he wouldn't turn up. I would say go Nightwing. He Nightwing? Yeah, we could go Nightwing. He might say Nightwing in his place. That's probably fair. Okay, so Nightwing's here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Joker just dropped in to, um, you know, show us a card trick or two. We'll put him over here because he wouldn't want to sit next to, you wouldn't want him and Nightwing next to each other. That would end badly. That is true. Yeah, that that'd be bad. Uh, so how many how many spaces have we got left? left? One. You got one left. One left. One. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. I need well, with John it. Cena then it is. John Cena is in. Can't see him anyway, so. All right, Terry, here you uh, go. No worries. I, am I up next? Oh, well, I was gonna let you come in and tell me if, if there's anything you. Has no, no, I like that layout. There's not a lot of plays being needed. Yeah. So it's all he's kind of thought through. He is. has. He has thought up. He's thought up a lot. I like it. I love it, Mabel. I've broken the rule. I bent the rules a little bit. Okay. Appearances count for me. Okay. You have David Ramsey. David Ramsey. So we've got the badge here. I want David Ramsey on the door. Diggle the digs. Okay. Patrick Stewart. The digs. Patrick Stewart. I want him right next to me. Okay. I need to learn how to make a proper cup of tea. Okay. You go with an Englishman for that. Okay, John Stewart is the next. John Stewart. John Stewart's on there because he appeared on, on SummerSlam. Okay. Yeah. I want him here. Oh, jeez. Because the conversation between these two. Okay. 
cannot go past me, so I'm going to be thoroughly I see, I see, I see, okay. Yeah. Uh, next we have Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Black Adam. Near, near the kitchen, surely. Yeah. He's going to, so, the kitchen is... Oh, I'm just going to spatially aware myself. Kitchen is here. A couple of double doors here for the kitchen. I'm going to have The Rock right here. He's in there, he's playing Black Adam. So he gets a list. Yeah, he is. The Rock. Right there. Eric Alan Kramer, aka the good Thor. Thor the is original Thor. <laughs> yeah, I want. I'm gonna put Thor space out, uh, just outside of John he Stewart. He's big he is man. because if this was a top-down view, he's a big man. He's gonna eat about this much food. Yeah. So we've got. Uh, and he's gonna need space for his jokes and me. Absolutely. Eh, <laughs> yeah, is there? Okay. Bill Bixby, you bring him, bring Bill back from the. Dead. I want them here. So you, want want, you want the action back together, the tag team. Yeah, absolutely. You don't form a champion. Shit. Sure. Team without your A-listers. That's fair. Yeah, it is. Is that okay? Yeah, it'll be when the party's over to it and he leaves and you get theme music with it. Absolutely. As, as he's walking out the door, you get the limit. My dad, Senior Badger, he's going right here. Senior, Senior Badger. Badger. <laughs> okay. Next to Patrick Stewart. Your dad, Patrick Stewart, will have a hell of a conversation. Oh, it'd be know. that Honey Badger. Yeah, that'd be great. That Honey Badger. Your son is something else. <laughs> I don't um, know what, but he's something else. Katie Cassidy? Katie Cassidy, my gorgeous. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> on your lap. <laughs> Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey appeared on uh, WWE's WrestleMania Plus. I think she's a fantastic uh, role model for kids. She's going to here with the digs. Because I'm saying... Security team. Oh, uh, because Deagle is a man of substance and class. He won't be putting hands on women. So, we need... Ronda. Rousey. Who, mind you, whose power level is over 9,000. That is true. That is true. <laughs> okay, you have Barack Obama and his Angular translator. Yes, I forget the translator's name. I'm going to put Barack uh, Obama. I believe it's Key. Key? Key Imperial. Yes, it is, actually. I'm going to put Barack here. Okay. Barack Obama, angry, angry translator. Okay. Are they sharing a seat? No, no, there's a high chair for the uh, oh, translator. Cool, cool. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> you've got Kevin Rudd. K Rudd. I'm going to K Rudd right here. Okay. K-Rod. Man, you bet the rules big time. K Rudd, mate, any any man who can get to the office of Prime Minister and get forgiven to for going to a strip club by the church, fine by me. Neil Patrick Harris. The only man who really should play a large screen Riddler. And the one who voices What is that guy's name again? Nolly. It's going right here. Uh now. You've made a note next to this one. Yes. Yes, I have. It's Andrew Miller is tied up in the corner. Chair. <laughs> rope. Esbro. Bruh. And the final one. The doll maker is using Ezra to make his new doll. Right there. <laughs> That's I like it. I like it. Yeah. That's an interesting, definitely See, interesting, didn't you? Right here, we have our entertainment for this evening. That's the thing. Watching that swami fuck get full of wax. Well, that was uh, that was quite interesting. So we've got we're gonna have our uh, once again kitchen, the kitchen, your front door. Yeah, you got that. There's your table. You got your oil painter right here. This canvas ready to go. There's a cameraman as well. And a cameraman. That's right. That's right. I, have around. I have both. Okay, so you've and got Kevin. Ke- photographer as well because okay. you're going to want steel shots. And- okay, so you've got Kevin Dunn here. Who'll miss all the plays, yeah. but still. You've got Leonardo, yeah, Leonardo Da Vinci. And, and uh, Ram Dude. Yeah, sure. Ram, Ram Dude. Dude. Okay. We've got. So I'm in the middle. I'm uh, in the middle. Give me, uh, do we have a red pen there? Red. Blue will go down. Red Thunder. That's right. Blue's right. unreliable. Alright. Poor China. Let's go. So you ready? Let's do it. To my left. To my left, to my left, is Sir Ian. Yeah, now, are we talking close? As in, like, close to cup of tea? Love one. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, he, he, so Ian McKellen and I are sharing stories all night. Ian McKellen. Sir. Okay, yeah. Sir McKellen. Now, on the right side, mm-hmm. Sir Patrick Stewart. That's, That's a lot of English going on. Yeah, but let's face it. I'm entertained all night because it's the classiest 
more class than I'm used to, especially on this show. That's, That's right. right. All right. Now you ready? Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna just build outwards. Absolutely. As you should. We'll go left, then go right. We'll just keep building around the table. Sitting next to Sir Ian is the Rock. Okay. Sitting next to Doctor J. Okay, so I'll go. I'll go around the table. Dwayne around. the Rock Johnson. So sitting sitting next to Doctor J. <laughs> Is uh, in fact John Cena because you know the friction there. Those two are not going to have a good night next to each other. Yep. The old JC. JC. Yep. And then next to them, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Holy shit, balls! Fuck that. The only thing you need is uh, CM Punk on that one as well. I'm not buying CM Punk. You can get fired. Now, going on the other side, next to Sir Patrick, you have. Are you ready for it? Mm. Deadpool. Well, well fuck it up. The double penetration himself, Deadpool. Okay, next to Deadpool, you have... Iron Man. We're talking Tony Stark or Iron Man? Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Okay, next to Iron Man, you have... Yes. Green Arrow. Ooh, liberal Green Arrow. Comic book Green Arrow. Okay. So I'm gonna, gonna have to make a note here as well. We got... Green Arrow Comic. Okay. Next to him? Yes. Dude. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The Dears. Okay, how many am I up to here? Just so I make sure I'm on my keyboard. One, right. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You so have got three, three more. Okay, now, this is how this is going to work. On the, the left wing of the table. Uh, here. So, then on this, or whichever, yeah. This is left. Yep, so left, the left wing of the table. Yes. Riggs and Murtaugh. <laughs> Who? Riggs and Murtar from Lethal Weapon. Are you counting them as one person? No, they're sitting there. They're here. They're, they're, they're with each other? Yeah, over here on the side of the table. Oh, side of the table? Yep. Oh, the wing, I do apologise. Yeah, no, the wing of the table is uh, Riggs and Murtar. Riggs and Murtar. Riggs. Because Mur- they're, they're by the door, so if shit breaks out, I've got cops there. Absolutely. I'm set. Not great cops, but cops. Yeah, they survived four <laughs> fucking movies. They were always too old for the shit. They're great cops. But don't forget, at one point, they weren't too old for the shit. And they'll be sacked, and some bloke will wander in with a sack. Could be worse. Be sacked. Sacked. Cop, police. Random sacked dude. Okay, a random sacks dude. Alright, now you ready? So that's, uh, you got one more. I know. Make it count. I have, I had to think long and hard about this, because obviously I had to sacrifice one person. I had to sacrifice... Tom Cavanaugh. Oh fuck! Or J. Or I just um, sacrificed J. Dubs. And I'm sorry, I can't cut. I can't cut my surrogate dad out. So J. Dubs won. So is J. he Dubs, getting a whole wing? He gets yeah. the whole wing. He gets a whole wing. This because, is nothing but J. Dubs territory. Because, yeah, because one, he's larger than life. But two, the man deserves. He deserves a spot there to be able to take it all in. Because you know J. Dubs is is taking it all in. He, J. Dubs will probably hang around last. He'll be there last with me, telling me. And he'll thank I'm you. pretty sure to close down, it would be me, J. W. F. and the two sirs. That's how the night will end. And you'd have a nice, a nice solid brandy or a whiskey. I would think so. With your sax dude at the side playing some nice sax for you. This is true. This is true. Exactly, playing the thing from 90210 or something on the side. Fantastic. I don't see anything wrong with that. No, that, that's my answer. That's, that's, that's my last supper right there. Excellent. Not a lot of plays because obviously I've tried to think it through so that I mean, everybody's the classy next to each other and I've protected everybody. That's it, that's, that's just it. Off. I mean, you've got these guys that can rush the front door at any given time. You've exactly. got the entrees. It depends which way you ask them to serve the entrees. If you want them to go anti-clockwise, they will. But do, do remember that uh, you got you got some wrestlers here. So a lot of the protein is going to go straight here. Well, see, the way I figured it was this, right? I'm not, I'm not only having one weight stuff. I'm going to have two weights. So they're constantly, they're always oh, looping over each other. Ah, right, so okay. So you have a constant revolving around each other so nobody's ever running out. Secondary problem. Plus also, yeah. you haven't asked me what kind of meal it is. It's actually like a big banquet, small sport. Oh, okay, they, so they come out and replace the plates on the table. So we've constantly got food in front of us. It's like whole water, mate. It's constantly there. Excellent, fantastic. See, the, the, the problem I thought you'd run into, because you're going to lose a lot of protein here in your wrestling section. Yeah. Uh, well, but if you've got, got, and if, if you've got J-Dubs, J-Dubs, I mean, he's, a lot of protein, he's, he's, he's pushing... What, 50? But you gotta look, it's a big boy, and then you got Ziggle. Section. You got these guys. It's a lot of protein Yeah, no, but look, look. Once you, but look, right? Let's take a look at some stuff here. Yeah. Try to balance it out. There's a lot of protein. This end here, a lot of fat. A lot of fat. This is donuts and coffee. Okay. And beer, and onion, and dog biscuits. So, that, so then you've got kind of a balance. Yes. Of, so you look at, look at the main body of the table. Yeah. 
you've got a balance of protein and protein eaters, and then I'm in the middle with the classic bloke, we're just staying skinny. See, that's the thing, I think with you guys, it'd be a lot of uh, high tea foods, like cupcakes and tea. Yeah. Uh, cucumber sandwiches. sandwiches with the cross kind of stuff. Like, Absolutely. You know, we're giving it, so this is the... giving these guys space to be able to do what they need to do. Now, the other thing I so this, imagine is... So this here could be called the Hail Britannia section. I think so. I think so. And then... <laughs> and so then so the other thing that you're missing down here... So, yeah. so you've got the wrestlers who obviously need space to be able to eat by themselves and the high-fat guys aren't getting in their way. Yeah. Now, when you get down to this end, yeah. what you've got is a bunch of heroes. <laughs> Mm. Haven't you? When you really think about it, I mean, you've got a table for it. Deadpool, but you, you've mainly got heroes at that end, like yeah, superheroes at that end. Mm. They're all going to be sharing the food around and like having each other's back. So I think down there, they're, they're going to be these guys are going to be mainly eating and yelling at each other. So this will be like a lazy Susan sort of thing. Yeah, and there's a lot of this, like you know, the class is in the middle, the respect is down that end, the trash talks at the other. Absolutely. So, so that that, that is very much the WWE Vince McMahon era, right? Yeah, there. that's the trash talk along with Briggs and Berta for commentary. I mean, these guys. I mean, the only thing, let's be honest, the only thing this motherfucker needs here is beer smokes onions and fruit and dog juice exactly and just give this man some whatever the hell he wants to be he just, he just needs to tell you he's too old and that's it and you feed him you can't feed him tuna because you've got to remember about the dolphins yeah exactly exactly so I think that's actually a well led so yeah so I think that's good one well done right, sir well, let's take a seat for that let's, let's go let's do that have we got a badge of the badge question for this week well I mean in honour of a villain that we actually don't get to see a lot the trickster well the trickster and uh, do, uh, dark side and Doomsday even. I want to know, take your time with this one, I want to know what components you would take from all the villains that you can muster up, combine into like a comic book one that you could actually pitch to a comic book company like DC or Marvel. It's a good question. That's, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's endless possibilities, you know. Down to your voice, skin colour. I, uh, just, just before we close out this week, just on niche things and things you don't notice, I had a, I had a random shower thought today that never struck me before. <laughs> Um, you ready? If you tug it in here, you can clean it right away. Uh, Lex Luthor mm-hmm. is literally the reverse Batman. He's the inverse Batman. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because he's still a millionaire, or mm-hmm. a billionaire, but he's evil, whereas mm-hmm. Batman is good. He's completely selfish, whereas Batman is selfless. Mm-hmm. Batman built a suit to hide his face. Lex's suit covers everything but his head. Yeah. Uh, his entire sole purpose is to destroy Superman. Batman likes Superman. Mm. And in a crisis, Lex looks for the way to make money off of people, whereas Bruce looks for the way to just be a humanitarian. Yeah. So, boom, mic dropped. Right there, I've cracked another code. Boop, boop. Superman Bang. villain is, in fact, inverse Batman. Wonderful. So, there we go. I love it, Maggie. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the episode, guys. It does. What do you, what do you guys think? It does. I think we need to use diagrams more. I think that was... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, diagrams looks good. Mm. Brayden looks like he's died over the last 20 minutes. Apparently, he <laughs> too much talking about our last suppers. He's feeling like he's better one now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the... Sadly, not here tonight, but I'm sure I'll be back next week to cop all of our shit again. The Pro Bat Richards. From, though, from those of us that are here, you've been joined by the Dad Knight Brayden Ahern. Thanks, folks. You've been joined by the Honey Vegetarian Neil. Kids are still on my... F- Come get your kids off of my fucking lawn. And you've been led an by me, Red Thunder Adam Gerard. And this has been From the Bad Cave. We hope you've enjoyed it yet again. We'll be back next week with a Marvel Menzi that will be... X-Men 3, so more Sir Patrick and more Sir Ian Cumming. And in fact, I have it uh, through good authority of somebody that produces this show. Don't know who that could possibly be. That in fact, we will hear more next week from... Sir Ian and Sir Patrick here live from the Batcave. But until next week, we'll see you all then. Good night. And who are you? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. 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 That's really funny. What? Without Matt here, there's less fuck up, yeah, but so we also yell at each other less. It's like a nicer version. It's like, I feel less bloated as well. It's it's almost like Matt is like the Metamucil of the show and that he makes us all have the shit. That's fair. Yep.
This has been a Cabana production. <laughs>